told myself before we weren't going to make access poor videos anymore. I told you guys we weren't going to make access poor videos anymore, but here we are making some access port videos today. So we're talking about OTS tunes today, and this is a pretty generalized video that can be applied to any car that uses OTS tunes. Now, what's going on guys, and welcome back to the channel. As you guys know, my name's Tanner. Welcome to Smedia, let's get into it. So if you don't know what an OTS tune is, it stands for off the shelf. It's an off the shelf map made by Cobb and other manufacturers that you can just easily upload to the car. Now, my personal preference is always going to be a pro tune or an e-tune over an OTS tune, and we'll get into a lot of those reasons here shortly. Now, before we even get into this video, I know there's going to be a handful of people that reply in the comment section that they've been on an OTS tune for years or months or weeks or days or maybe hours and that they have absolutely no issues with them. We'll touch on that as well. Don't you worry about it. So without further ado, let's get into some OTS tune action. So why do OTS tunes suck? because they're not the greatest. They're not the worst, they're not the greatest, they're not the best. But OTS tunes, you have to keep in mind, are a tune made by a manufacturer such as Cobb or other vendors on the market that are supposed to be a tune that you can use on any vehicle across the world. Now there's a lot that goes into tuning for these cars such as elevation, altitude, air density, air temperature, humidity. So many factors go into a tune that if you start taking a generalized tune and applying it to multiple vehicles, of course, some of them are not going to like the tune. A lot of the times I'll get comments from you guys saying, hey, my dam is reading this, my feedback knock is this, my fine knock learn is this. Yes, you may get skewed results on an OTS tune compared to somebody else who's using an OTS tune. All, like we'll take my STI for example, all 257s, EJs at least, are assembled in the exact same factory with the exception of the S209, which is assembled in the STI factory. But every single EJ will respond differently to an OTS tune. You have ring gap, spark plug, spark plug gap, Every little minute detail in an engine is going to affect how the tune reacts and how the engine responds to the tune. So not only is it going to be the tune that's having a factor on the car, but it's gonna be the car that's having a factor on the tune as well. So with that, you might get decreased dam, you might get increased knock, you, get, you might get more fine knock learn than you would on another tune. Now, some people ask me, hey, is this tune better than this company's tune for an OTS map? Not necessarily, because there are so many variables that go into a tune on a car, you're gonna have to get one that's pretty specialized for your car for it to run in its optimal condition or its optimal like performance aspect for all the modifications or the parts that you have on it. But that leads into the next point of why I don't like OTS tunes. So OTS tunes are made with specific map notes for specific parts that you're gonna be putting on your car. If you start deviating away from the map notes of a manufacturer or a vendor, then you're also going to start getting skewed readings on your access port or other values such as your dam dropping, your feedback knock increasing and your fine knock learn changing. If you start skewing away from those map notes, it can start to get pretty hairy. And that is when I suggest using an E-Tune or a Pro Tune. Now I know that there's going to be a handful of you down in the comments, like I said earlier, that's gonna say that my OTS tune has been running wonderful on my car for years. And that may be true. Some cars do respond to OTS tunes differently than others do like we just talked about, especially older STIs and WRXs. If you look at the GD chassis, WRX and the STI, the ECUs and the engines are a lot more tolerant of more modifications that you're putting on them and a more generalized tune versus some of these newer cars need more precise tuning aspects. So the next question I see pretty frequently regarding OTS tunes is, can I use a catless downpipe with an OTS tune? Technically, yes, you can. Have I done it? Yes, on my older GD models, my 2002, 2007, and 2006 STIs and WRXs, I have used catless downpipes on OTS tunes. Now, when I did do this, I kept it on a light wastegate map versus a high wastegate map to help reduce the chances of boost creep because that is a real issue that not a lot of people pay attention to, unfortunately, and it can lead to some pretty negative results. So if you are using an OTS tune, my guess is that you're going to be internally gated because you don't have too much done to the car at this point. And with using an internally gated turbo and a catless downpipe, you run into the issues of having boost creep. So essentially what is happening is the diameter of the wastegate inside of the turbo is too small to let all of the exhaust gas pass through it. So when you're catless, it's letting all of that exhaust gas try to flow as much as it can. But the diameter of the hole only lets so much gas pass through it. Now all that gas that is not able to get through that internal wastegate hole has to go somewhere so it backtracks, spin the spins the turbine a little faster, jumping boost a little bit, which 
is why they call it boost creep. So if you're tuned for 20 PSI and you're hitting 22 PSI, that is boost creep. Now what happens when you start to boost creep is that your engine is getting a lot more air into it, but the ECU is still sending the exact same amount of fuel into the cylinders. So you start to run lean, which can turn into detonation, pre-detonation, and a lot of other things on there. Now, no company out there is going to make an OTS tune for a catalyst downpipe, and that's gonna be for a couple reasons. One, they don't want the liability from the EPA and a lot of these states that have to do smog emissions and all of these other tests to keep vehicles on the road. They don't wanna be held liable and promote the use of catalyst downpipes just on their end. It's a legal aspect. They don't want anything coming back to them, which I totally understand. If you do wanna be doing a catalyst downpipe, like I said, highly suggest an E-Tune, Pro-Tune, and external wastegate is highly suggested as well. You can only eliminate so much of it with a boost controller. But catless downpipes, I don't suggest using them on an OTS tune, but some of you guys are gonna do it anyway, so you do you. So you've decided that you wanna use an OTS tune on your car. Well, giddy up, let's go. What OTS tune are you supposed to use? That is a very good question, my friend. So Cobb has pre-made maps on the access port from stages zero through one that have predetermined modification levels that you need to have on the car. That is essentially how they define what a stage is, is what is done to the car. It's not one of my favorite ways of determining what's done to a car, but it is what they use and it's what's so widely known. Now, before we get into what each stage is, some of you guys are gonna say, hey, what if I don't have the Cobb supported part and I have a different manufacturer's part? Your results may vary depending on what the part is it's not a bad idea to follow Cobb's map notes specifically that is why I say an e-tune or a pro tune is always suggested and always recommended but if you are going to be installing these parts and you are going to be using these tunes let's go over these tunes real quick a stage zero is going to be essentially no modifications done to the car it is going to adjust timing and AFR just a little bit to make it a little more spunky to drive because who doesn't want a spunky car to drive stage one is going to be an intake with box stage one plus is going to be an intake with box and a cat back. Stage two is only going to be a downpipe or a turbo back. Stage two plus is going to be an intake with a turbo back exhaust. And stage three is going to be injectors, fuel rails, fuel pump, fuel pressure regulator, intake, and a turbo back. So if you are gonna be using one of these OTS tunes, this is why I suggest sticking to the map notes. When you start to deviate away from the map notes on the access port or the OTS maps is when you're gonna start getting increased feedback knock, increased fine knock learn, and decreased dam readings, which can potentially cause harm to the engine because the ECU thinks it's seeing so much air or it thinks it's seeing so much fuel and in actuality, it is not. Another question that I see asked fairly frequently is do you have to have this thing plugged in at all times? No, you don't. As soon as you marry the access port to the car and you upload the tune, you can definitely unplug this thing, throw it in your glove box and totally forget about it. There's a reason they call these things anxiety ports and uh, if you don't wanna look at it, just throw it in the glove box. All right, you guys. I told you we'd swing back around to this one. So what if you're using an OTS tune and all of the map notes match what parts you have on the car, but you're still getting decreased dam, you're still getting feedback knock, you're still getting a lot of fine knock learn. Now, like I said, each engine is going to respond differently to OTS tunes. It's going to take into consideration overall engine health, mileage on the car. It's going to take into consideration ring gap, spark plug gap, what spark plugs you're using, what fuel you're using. There's so many factors that go into this. Now, if it is getting a lot of weird readings, you are throwing check engine lights or things like that, this is when I would highly suggest you swap over to at minimum an E-Tune or you go get a Pro-Tune if you have access to a Pro-Tuner in your area. This will really, really help the overall engine health of the car and it will also make the engine run a lot happier. Now, another question that I see in accordance with this one is maybe you're in an area that doesn't have the best gas, maybe you can't get 93 octane. When you are selecting your map, make sure that you're using the correct octane map as well they have a 91 and a 93 let's say that you can't get 93 and they only have 92 in your area like they do in mine round down use the 91 octane map and use 92 gas I know the last question that I see asked pretty frequently is can I use a burble tune on my car 
It is an OTS tune that a couple people out there make. I would not suggest using it. Now there's a couple reasons that I wouldn't suggest using it. Now the first one is the way that it works. It's essentially adjusting timing and you are dumping a lot of fuel into the cylinders. Now all of the unburnt fuel that is not used in the detonation to make power, to make your car go, gets pushed out of the exhaust down the downpipe and then in there is when it explodes, you get some crazy looking cool flames, your car makes all these loud noises, everyone on the street hates you because you're going to work at 4 a.m. and your car is spitting three feet, like three feet of flames and Jimmy, your neighbor hates you, I'm talking to you, Mr. Burbleton user. Some of the downsides of using that is when you put too much fuel into the cylinders, what can happen is some of that fuel will drip down the cylinder walls. It'll get past the crank and go into the oil pan. If you start mixing gas and oil, it will start to kill your oil and reduce the lifespan of the oil that much sooner. And then it'll start to thin it out. You don't want thin oil in your engine because then a lot of other bad things can happen. It is a possibility. I'm not saying it is going to happen to you. Now, if you're using an OTS tune, you're probably still internally gated, which means you have a cat, which means if you start pushing fuel through that cat, it's gonna start killing that catalytic converter much quicker and it's going to potentially clog it up as well. And cats are not expensive. Let me tell you that now. I think the cheapest cat and downpipe I've seen is like NVIDIA's and I think it's like $450, which I don't wanna pay $450 for an NVIDIA cat and downpipe if I don't have to, because I just killed my cat wanting to shoot like three to four foot flames out the back of my car. But don't get me wrong, it does look cool, but I would uh, not suggest doing it. And then, I mean, the last thing, but a lot of us don't really care about it, is fuel mileage, dumping excess fuel into the cylinders. Yeah, it's gonna use more fuel, it's gonna de increase your fuel mileage, you're gonna be spending more money at the gas pump just because you want some crazy looking flames at the back side of your car. So there you have it. That is my stance on OTS tunes, what I recommend for you guys. My recommendation is always going to be an e-tune or a pro tune though, and you guys already know that. So if this video helped you guys, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button and turn it blue like the badge on the Subaru. And if you are not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up that top my right, your left corner today, this tonight, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, midnight, 2 a.m., wherever you are, hit that button if you so desire to. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!